challenge Adam to find the best small driver's car for not outrageous money. I reckon he forgot a certain car maker from Munich does theirs with six cylinder turbo power. I bet when Kurt proposed this challenge to me, he forgot that BMW make their small ultimate driver's machines with rear wheel drive. Not only do you get a good dose of M performance fiddling, you can tap into the M effect without breaking, <laughs> breaking the bank. <laughs> You've got to be joking. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> Great minds, mate. Think alike. Well, not identically alike. Mate, this is the M140i Prestige Badge, 250 kilowatts of inline turbo six power, rear wheel drive and five doors. May I present to you the M240i. Same fancy badge, same pokey engine, rear wheel drive and two doors. Mate, this is gonna be a walkover. How? They're virtually identical. Our idea of identical is clearly very, very different. One of these cars is 17 grand cheaper than the other. The recent midlife LCI update has provided the M240i Coupe sharper looks and a lift in equipment. But at 76,800, BMW has hiked the price by a couple of grand. Equally as fresh faced and feature laden is the LCI improved M140i. The old hatchback was already more affordable than the Coupe, but BMW wiped another five grand off the price. At 59,990, the five door looks a relative steal. Mate, that's a massive difference in price. I'll tell you something for a start. I hate their names, so let's call this the one and this the two, and I can already tell you something about the one, and I can see where they've been cost-cutting. They haven't paid for a designer. It's ugly. Yeah, okay, but mate, it's still better than every other Model 1 series out there, and it's better than every 1 series in the history of 1 series. The M140i might be the least unsexy of the range, but its two-door twin is hardly what you might call 17 grand sexier. Mate, here's the problem with the 2 Series. You're going to parade around all sexy and tough until a full fat M2 pulls up next year, then you become a little shrinking violet. You can see what BMW have done here. 60K is a decent ask for a hot hatch, and this is the hottest small five door from a premium German mark. The 2 is completely opposite. 77 grand is chump change for a sports coupe from BMW that also wears an M badge. The very same M badge that's on my 1 Series. Neither BMW is a beauty pageant winner, so perhaps the differences run below the skin. Mate, the 2 Series is classic BMW design in here. It is, and it's upmarket BMW, which is what I like about it. It's not, uh, it's no German taxi, you know. Mm -hmm. um, materials, textures, double stitching. I drive 6, which is really cool, um, Nav Pro. I found it a little clunky to get used to, but once you're used to it, it's so good. My favourite part of it is that you've got three ways to input. You've got a touchpad, and a dial as well as a touchscreen. The leather's really good, the, the seats are super comfy and they're heated and they're electrically adjustable. Yeah, uh, instrumentation's pretty slick too. It's kind of got this sort of semi-digital sort of uh, design, but it's probably doesn't have the bells and whistles of the latest three series, but it's pretty good. Well, look, I love it, but uh, mate, I reckon we're gonna check out the one series. Let's do it. Cool. Well, it's not so um, red in here, but uh, are you thinking what I'm thinking? It's exactly, it's exactly the, the same. same. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check out the back seat. All right. Well, it's not exactly what you call palatial in here, but um, it's not too bad for uh, two adults in the back. Yeah, I've got a decent amount of leg room and a fair bit of headroom with this sort of roof cutout. You know, I reckon this would make a pretty handy urban runabout if you had a couple of young kids or, I don't know, even teenage kids. Yeah. 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 You want to check out the back seat of the coupe? Yeah, let's do it. Done. Mate, getting into this is more Ninja Warrior than getting into a car. <laughs> that looked really awkward. Are you all right? No, I think I've dislocated <laughs> my shoulder. <laughs> it's, you know, once you're in here, it's kind of, it's still pretty terrible, but it's not the worst sports coupe I've ever tried to squeeze into <laughs> the back of. And compared to what? You ever tried to get in the back of a 911? Or a Ford Mustang? Yeah, but mate, this is ridiculous. My head is literally squashed. I've got no leg room. This is crazy. It's a bit of a squeeze. But you, you know what's not a squeeze? What is that? Let me show you. All right. So which of these two do you suppose has the larger boot space? Well, it's got to be the hatch, mate. Wrong. Turns out that the coupe has 390 litres of boot space, which is 10% larger than the 360 in the hatch. Mate, that's all good and well, but now with the rear seat stand, you've got 1,200 litres to play with. That's enough for a pushy or a surfboard or any sporting gear. Mate, you know the only sport that matters with these two cars. What's that? Sport or driving, my friend. So let's go for fun. All right, OK. Shit. 
shoehorning a three litre turbocharged six cylinder engine into a small coupe or hatchback is nothing short of inspiring. And in fact, no one other than BMW is really doing that trick these days. But this isn't new for BMW. A coupe this size and of equal tonne and a half weight used to be called a three series. Having said that, very few mid-sized BMWs past or present could boast 250 kilowatts and a ridiculous 500 newton meters. The amount of squirt this 2 Series has is really impressive. In fact, this M light version of the 2 Series has more torque than the more heroic and more expensive M2. What's really special about this powertrain in five-door hatchback form is that it's so unique. BMW has a bunch more potent coupes than Kurt's car, but this is the one and only hot hatch and there's nothing quite like it on the market. Certainly nothing that has 250 kilowatts and 500 newton meters, though I'm not convinced this six-speed manual is the pick for either of these cars. I'm just not gelling with it. It might be a hot hatch, but you punt it hard and it reacts like a sports coupe. This coupe is fitted with the eight-speed automatic transmission which is so good, you wonder why BMW's rivals still persist with a jerky dual-clutch transmissions. Probably doesn't sit as flat as an M2, nor is as potent around a racetrack, but the compliance in the suspension really allows it to grip up in the corners, and it's an absolute hoot on the country road. There are lots of hatches out there with a ton of grip, and probably more grip than this one series, but almost all of them will find understeer when you really start pushing hard. The difference with this BMW is that you can drive it on the throttle out of corners. And it's the balancing character of a real driver's car, even at speeds that won't risk your license. I've got to say, Adam's hatch is looking pretty quick up ahead. And Kurt's coupe doesn't appear to be 17 grand faster. <laughs> Swapping into the two and everything feels so familiar, but I love this auto gearbox. I love it so much more than the manual. There are some other minor differences, but if you weren't driving the two BMWs back to back, I wonder if you'd even notice. One thing I have noticed though, is when you stick the coupe into a corner, it's a little nose heavy. That's weird given it looks as though there's less metal and glass weighing down over the rear of the coupe. But by the seat of the pants, there's nothing between them for pace and performance. Well, this hatch certainly doesn't feel any slower than the coupe. I guess that's not some great revelation given that BMW quotes identical 4.6 second acceleration times for both cars. But the manual fitted to the hatchback penalises it by 0.2 of a second. To be brutally honest, when you look through the windshield, you can't really tell whether you're driving the hatch or the coupe. They're that similar. But it is a shade more balanced when you tip it into a corner, as if the weight is a little more even across the front and rear axles. That hatch is seriously impressive, but what I've discovered is both of these cars, they're really m light cars, they're not real M cars. Yeah, but mate, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Like, they're both really comfortable and easy to live with. Correct. So this lightweight M performance theme is a lot easier to accept, I reckon, when you're not paying through the nose for the M badge. Mate, I agree. If M performance is supposed to mean budget performance but with a premium German badge, there's only one car in the running. It's gotta be the hatch. Yep, and by that logic, the M140i is really the bargain of the year. Mate, the coupe is, it's really, really nice, but I don't know if it justifies being 28% more expensive. You know what? In the UK, the coupe is only 8% more expensive. Had the 240 been, say, 65 grand and not 77 grand, I'd cop the five grand for the premium coupe looks. I know, and the thing is, is this car's priced halfway between the hatch and the M2. In fact, probably a little bit closer to the M2, which is sadly a bit of a no man's land. 